Excuse me. Excuse me. Do you know why we pulled you over today? Exactly. It's because you're not subscribed. So you better fix that right now. Or we're gonna have to take you in. Okay, let's go. Um. Oh, excuse me. Okay, apparently not, it's not going to work here. Let's do it in the control panel here. Let's go. Oh. Goodbye. Okay, before we get started though. Um, oh, it's the iPhone SE. Nice. Let's go. Okay, let me pump up the volume a little bit for background music. And um, just a tad. So you can hear MKBHD nice and well and um let's keep it pumping boys this is mkbhd's iphone se 2022 reveal wow it's not even an impression it's a reveal um old dog new trick interesting let's keep it pumping all right what's up mkbhd here and here it is this is the new 2022 iphone se now on paper se stands for special edition still according to an old Phil Schiller quote. But the truth is, this is the least special phone that Apple makes. So I propose a new name for this one, unofficially. Let's just call it the simple edition, because that's what it is. The iPhone SE formula is and has been simple. New chip, old body, low price. So the ingredients this year are the A15 Bionic, same chip that's in the iPhone 13s. In the body of an iPhone 8, again, with its uh, old design and home button and everything, and $429 price tag. Now, last generation, this formula, I said it was a hit, right? But now it's two years later and competition's sort of catching up a little bit more. It's not as obvious of a huge winner as it's been in the past, especially because the price did go up a little bit, but in a world of the budget phone with the high refresh rate display versus the budget phone with the big battery or the budget versus the budget phone with the big battery or the budget the high refresh rate display versus the budget phone with the big battery. How, how is asphalt making the A15 stutter? Or is that something in the game? It's kind of mad. It's kind of crazy. I've never seen the A15 stutter in any game. And even in Genshin Flip and Impact, that's crazy battery or the budget phone with a stylus or the one with quad cameras. This one has got something all the rest of them don't have, which is it's the budget phone that's an iPhone. Here's my take though. This is and always has been. And about seven years of updates. <laughs> I mean, apart from being an iPhone, it also has seven years of updates, but I mean, he knows that. So I mean, I'm not trying to act smart here. And a very unbalanced phone. Like this has got parts that would humiliate other $400 phones, but then other parts that are starting to fall behind those phones. Like putting an A15 Bionic in the iPhone SE means that this $400 phone has a more powerful chip than the $1,300 Galaxy S22 Ultra. Basically it has- I mean, that's mental. I, that still, it still breaks my brain that that is even a thing. I have like, <laughs> Um, let's go back. Uh, <laughs> that, it's crazy. It's absolutely mental. And the reason why that's absolutely mental is because this this chip, I feel like this chip came out in the iPhone 13 before the uh, S22 Ultra came out. So, like, regardless, right, of this chip obviously now being in the iPhone SE because they have the SKUs and they can just produce this chip in, in masses. So... Uh, it's kind of cheating. Uh, so let's just forget about this being in the iPhone SE. It's cool, but let's forget about it. It's also in a flagship phone that this phone here that you're seeing on the screen is trying to compete with that came out months before the Ultra. So it absolutely baffles me that this phone is not even close to the performance of the uh, A15. It's crazy. So... It doesn't, it doesn't make sense. I'm not sure what Samsung is doing. No, we now have an iPad Air. Again, I'm just going to repeat it. We have an, we have an iPhone SE of uh, 529 uh, USD that's outperforming their yeah, $1,200, $1,300 phone. 
and we have a 599 iPad Air that is outperforming their Tab S8 Ultra, which is also 1200 USD, I feel like something close to that. So it's absolutely mental, and I don't know, 1100, whatever, fuck. It's absolutely mental that this is happening to a company as big and as sophisticated as Samsung. It's crazy. I feel like they have to put way more uh, 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 research and developer, uh, development uh, uh, um, money, whatever they have to do, I'm not sure, like, like, I, I don't even know what they have to do. But they have to do something with their own Exynos chip. Because Qualcomm ain't gonna cut it anymore. It's done. It is done. I, maybe met with the whole uh, whatever flip they're going to make with this guy that allegedly has been spying or has been using uh, uh, knowledge that he shouldn't be using uh, to create new chips at Qualcomm. I'm not sure if that's going to do anything. Uh, by God, for Qualcomm, I hope it does. Because if it doesn't, this is this is humiliation on the highest level. I've never seen it. I've never seen it. it has the most powerful chip in any phone right Samsung now, K alongside you, yeah. the flagship iPhone 13 and 13 Pro. That is clearly more power than a typical iPhone SE buyer is going to need, and it flies through iOS on a 720p display with no hiccups. That's no surprise. It feels like putting way too much engine in a tiny car. But the reason for doing this is the same as it always has. I'm not sure. So, on the, on, yeah, I, I can kind of understand where MKB is coming from. But, like, this is the reason why it has this chip is because Apple wants to support it for the next seven years. Something like that. Maybe six. Six or seven years. So, this chip is going to be enough, hopefully, for people in over the next six years of using this device. So... Yeah, right now it's an engine that's <laughs> that is not supposed to be in a phone like that. And in about four years, you're going to understand like, oh shit, I'm really glad that chip was in the iPhone because I'm not ready to upgrade yet because I don't give a shit. I mean, I'm talking as if I am the audience that the target audience of the iPhone. I, I, like, obviously, they're going to say like, I don't give a shit about upgrading every single year. I just care about the phone working. So that is why that engine is in there. And MKBZ knows that uh, this, I'm not trying to be smart, I'm just saying, like, I know where he's coming from with this analogy, but I do not completely agree, especially with, like, the updates in mind, right? Has been, which is, it's got headroom for days. This phone is going to perform the same way it does today, as it does in two years, as it does in four, five, maybe six years. And that is a priority for an iPhone SE buyer, which is the longevity, the software updates. This is probably the longest lasting for an there you go. And this is why I should shut the fuck up and listen. <laughs> because he was going to say it in his next sentence. I'm sorry, my guess. I'm just like, this is why I just do not make my own content. <laughs> because, I mean, people that are way smarter than me are just already doing it. So I might as well just <laughs> react to them. $100 phone period. And then, of course, there's a bunch of other benefits to adding this newest chip. This phone has 5G now, not millimeter wave, but sub-6 5G, which is the most common kind and probably will be for a couple years. And then just better overall efficiency, although I'll get to this phone's battery life in a second. And it now also has the new image signal processor in the A15, so it can get a little more out of the exact same camera hardware. And by the way, there is one more gig of RAM in here than the last SE, so four gigs of RAM. It's basically an iPhone 13 as far as performance goes. But then let's talk about that camera on the back, right? Because that's the one other thing that is just, it's in a league of its own. It's miles ahead of other $400 phones. So it's just a single camera on the back, 12 megapixels. As far as I can tell, it's the exact same camera hardware again as the iPhone 8 and the last SE. And the fact is it's just straight up the best single camera in this range. It's the most consistent. It's the best with color and noise management. It doesn't have as much uh, natural background blur as the others with bigger sensors, but it also doesn't have as much fringing. And then the A15 Bionic is giving you deep fusion in medium dim lighting and smart HDR4 in high dynamic range situations. Yep. Yeah, I still don't understand why they didn't do the night mode thing. Like, that would be such a game changer, as, even for the audience that is interested in the iPhone SE. Obviously, they're not interested in like uh, six cameras on the back of their phone. But night mode, yeah, again, like if they are like somewhere with a date or something like that, they want to take a picture of their food, they want it to look semi-decent, right? Not, not like a piece of shit. Like, I don't understand. Like, this, this is this is normal use for a, uh, for a person that just buys 
$500 phones. Night mode is kind of like essential. So I, I don't really understand why it's not on the phone, but maybe MKBHD will touch on that as well in a bit. Probably whenever I hit play. We have the new photographic styles feature that builds the different looks straight into the image processing pipeline. So basically, if you thought the iPhone 8 photos were good, this will also be good. Now, you know, when I'm shooting with it, yeah, I do miss not having an ultra wide sometimes. And there are some instances where I really wish I could hit like a 2X button and just get a little bit of optical zoom going. But at the same time, I have to remember almost nobody getting this phone will have ever experienced that stuff in the past. So they won't really know what they're missing. Oh, also, this is the best video camera in any $400 phone, hands down. It bumps up to 4K 60 this time, great autofocus, all the same great color and stuff I was talking about. The one thing that's missing from this camera still, night mode. You would think with an A15 Bionic, they could finally get night mode into an iPhone SE camera, but that's still not here. But the point is, you can see where I'm going with this, right? Kind of weird. World-class chip with excellent performance and longevity and an amazing camera, probably the best in any budget phone alongside the Pixel 5a. And then everything else about this phone is from the iPhone 8. That, that phone came out in 2017. So it's uh, looking a little long in the tooth, as they say. Like, it's just not very balanced. Now, it's not that there's things that are bad about this phone. It's just that they're so locked into this formula, this exact formula. Like the newer iPhone 13 mini is smaller than this phone, but it has a 5.4 inch display, right? This iPhone 8 body is pretty small and trim by today's standards, but when you turn it around, you got those bezels and the chin, and you just crunch down to a much smaller 4.7 inch display. And that display is, like I said, barely above 720p resolution. It's 60 hertz. It maxes out at a not very bright 600 nits. So the whole front of this phone just feels so incredibly outdated. You know, you look at the other $400 phones now, and they're all trying to give you much larger displays, thinner bezels. Lots of them are doing 90 or 120 hertz refresh rates now, no problem. But hey, that's not Apple's formula. They stick with the iPhone 8 body exactly and what can fit in this body, exactly. You know, almost all of the competitive phones in this price have multiple cameras, at least an ultra wide, right? But that's not the iPhone SE's formula. The iPhone 8 had one camera. The last iPhone SE had one camera. So yeah, this one also is gonna have one camera. And on top of that, you know, lots of competitive budget phones are jamming impressively massive batteries in there. 4,000, 4,500, literally 5,000 milliamp hours plus sometimes. And the single biggest concern with the last iPhone SE was battery life, right? So Apple did hear that a little bit. They did take improved battery chemistry and fit a slightly higher capacity battery in this same body, but Generally, it still behaves pretty much the same way. So we know A15 Bionic is a very efficient chip. It did great in this phone with standby time and those efficiency cores really go to work when you're doing that lightweight stuff. The web browsing, messaging, reading, the stuff most iPhone SE users do plenty of. But if you do fire up a high brightness navigation app or if you jump into a game or just use the phone a lot, then this is, it's still a flagship chip. You can still burn through battery really quickly with all that power. So. Yeah, and it's kind of like what I said in the uh, iPhone SE uh, part of the stream, right? It's This phone is not made for people who are going to play uh, uh, <laughs> uh, insane games on it, like Asphalt or uh, Genshin Impact. You can, but it's not built for it. So it's kind of like, yeah, it's kind of like you're buying a budget computer and then you're going to start playing like insane games and you're like, holy shit. Like, or a budget laptop, maybe that's that's a better one. And then, holy shit, how fast is this battery going to go, right? Yeah, I mean, that's just how it works. It's just, yeah, unfortunately, that's how it works. And I'm not sure, like, it's the phone is built, I guess, for people who need the essentials to work whenever they take the phone out of their pocket. So again, making payments, uh, replying to a quick email, replying to a quick text, maybe watch some TikToks when they're waiting in some sort of lane uh, at the grocery shop. But it's really short bursts of using the phone. It's not like me that's basically glued to the phone, even when I'm streaming, right? When I'm sitting like this, sometimes I'm literally w w uh, looking at my phone. I am glued to my phone. Again, like like I said, like if I do not, if like this is for people that have a combined 
uh, usage, uh, 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 a screen on usage of the of the phone of about two, maybe three hours. If I have two, maybe three hours of screen on time on my phone, it's basically time. It's basically time to plan the funeral, dude. I'm dying. Something is wrong. I'm literally dying. It's done. It's time. And that's just what I'm saying. Like, I... It's crazy. Like, three, uh, two or three hours is my morning, fam. That's my morning. <laughs> of Twitter. <laughs> so, I could get to the end of the day, like, knowing what I was doing, but I still did notice, like, when I fired this up and navigated to work, 30 minute drive with Waze on, 10% battery, gone. Like, if I just used, if I was in a game like Asphalt for a little while, I could notice it churning down battery. And I killed this phone more than once by 9 p.m. And then because of this formula, this phone still maxes out at 20 watts of fast charging. So it'll fill up zero to 100 in like an hour. And it still only has seven and a half watts max of wireless charging. I would actually recommend leaving on smart data mode on this phone, which will automatically turn off 5G when you don't need it because that can help save a little bit of juice. But overall, yeah, this phone's battery life is still not great. It's barely average. So yeah, world-class is the chip, the camera, and the haptics. And then below average is everything else. So that's, it's very similar to the last year or the 2020 iPhone SE, which by the way, I held up next to this phone. You can barely tell the difference other than a slightly different color. We got a bit of a deeper red this year. And then also instead of black and white, it's starlight and midnight this time. But basically the number one thing I found myself wondering when using this phone is, what if they weren't so locked into this formula? Like this phone starts at 429 bucks. I'm guessing the price is a little higher because of 5G, but let's call it $400, right? Uh, $50 extra gives you 128 gigs of storage because this only starts at 64. And we know that they can make a phone this cheap because they're using this exact same body that they have been able to mass produce for so long that the price has gone down. But if they wanted to change something about it, like adding a camera hole or changing something about it, that would mean new research, new tooling, new manufacturing processes spinning up, and that would bump up the price. But by how much? Because I kind of still want to see it. Like I would argue that a, a crappy 120 inch display, which you see in all kinds of other budget phones, would make this iPhone feel faster for the life of the phone. But they're not gonna do that because they've still got this panel that they've gotten since the beginning of time. And we also know that those obnoxiously thick four, 5,000 milliamp hour batteries would obviously make this phone last much longer, but you'd have to make the phone thicker and that would increase the price. But by how much? Like clearly they could use more battery or even tossing in an ultra wide just because every other phone seems to have that ultra wide camera. I missed it. I think other people who are shopping with other phones will notice this doesn't have one, but that would mean cutting another camera hole and that's a whole new design that costs more money, but how much more? Maybe you could still do it. But really, I'm just gonna have to wonder that forever because this seems to be the only way Apple knows. Well, this guy's, or girl, is uh, writing an entire paragraph here. That's, ladies and gentlemen, let's go. Um, He talks about battery life, but then aims to put a 120 hertz display. So, okay. I'm not even sure if I should read it. Listen, okay. Um, so that that's going to be a domino effect of changes that will have to that they will have to make of changes they will have to make. Sorry, yeah. Uh, better batteries, new display tech, new software, crappy uh, 120 hertz display means no promotion. Did he say crappy? Much more. Maybe you can still do it. But really, I'm just gonna have to wonder that forever will notice this doesn't have one, but that would mean cutting another camera hole just because every other phone seems to have that ultra wide camera. I missed it, but you'd have to make the phone thicker and that would increase the price. But by how much? Like clearly they could use more battery or even tossing in an ultra wide just because every other phone know that those obnoxiously thick four, 5,000 milliamp hour batteries would obviously make this phone last, but they're not gonna do that because they've still got this panel that they've feel faster. Be 120 inch display, which you see because I kind of still want to see it. Like I would argue that a, a crappy 120 inch display, which you see in all kinds of other budget phones. Didn't even hear him say crappy. Um, anyways, uh, okay. Yeah, I give you that. Um, a, a crappy 120 hertz display means no promotion, probably. Yeah, just 60, 60 or 120, probably, yeah, yeah. Uh, so it will probably stay locked. It also means making the phone potentially thicker. So, like, 
the reason why I wanted to stop reading it is because, listen, I, I think he understands that. He, he's just fantasizing about it. I, I, like, obviously, everything that I said, he already knows that as well. Like, this guy knows more about tech than... Like, I feel like his, his little thumb knows more about tech than I do in my entire body. So, <laughs> but uh, for me, it's, I, I, I know what you mean, right? I, but he's just fantasizing about the idea. And obviously, he knows that that would be a chain reaction, of of changes that Apple will have to make if they want it to be a good experience. Especially if you do a crappy 120 hertz display, then yeah, probably it won't have promotion, so you won't have to write new software for it that can insta-lock it uh, between 60 and 120. Stuff like that, right? So I think he understands that. And a better battery to even maintain 120 hertz for a long time. I'd, he understands that. He's like, we're not talking to some <laughs> random person on the street. This is MKBHD. Um, so yeah, I, like literally, I I I do know what you mean. Also, he's just fantasizing, uh, so I, I'm I'm not sure what you want. Um, yeah, uh, true. Would make this iPhone phone seems to have that people who are shopped camera hole all knows how to make a cheaper phone. It's boring, it's predictable, but it's simple, and you know exactly what you're getting and not getting because. Basically, it's happened before. Now, all that being said, this is still actually a very easy iPhone to recommend because it's the cheapest new iPhone and it's gonna get the software updates for the longest time. The natural considerations that kept coming up, we talked about this at the studio, is what about iPhone 11, right? And iPhone 11, it won't have 5G, but it will have a bigger display, thinner bezels, face ID, better battery life, and it'll be about a hundred bucks more. And there's also iPhone 13 mini, which is gonna be a bigger display, thinner bezels, face ID, better battery life, and has 5G, and the newest chip, but it's like $300 more. But neither of those have something this phone has, which is the home button. And that sounds crazy and it might be a surprise, but a lot of people still really just want a home button. Never underestimate the power of the home button. So at the end of the day, I'm glad the iPhone SE just got any update at all, because that's better for people getting this phone now into the future. Old dog, new trick. Thanks for watching. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Yeah, I, I basically love MKBHD. He's like, his content is so good. It's perfect. It's absolutely insane. Um, I was a bit loud, wasn't it? Anyways, ladies and gentlemen.